All right. <clears throat> I am going to do a video here, actually a series of videos on <clears throat> first time advice for elk hunters and western hunters. So I've been out there now, this will be three years. Um, certainly not an expert. Uh, I do have a lot of time camping uh, in Boy Scouts up in the Boundary Waters in Minnesota and then out west and a significant amount of time using different equipment in the military in places all around the world so do a quick series i don't get paid anything for this i don't know how to get paid for this nor do i want to this is just advice for me to you i started out about three years ago and didn't have a whole lot of ideas i had like i said a lot of experience from other adventures so that helped but this one's going to be uh, kind of the intro to the series and I'm going to start out doing this one on uh, we'll call it spike camp camping equipment so this is the equipment that the beginner or the new western hunter is going to want to look for uh, to get out there be safe be comfortable and be able to hunt so I'm going to list off what I have I'll let you know what I've upgraded so far and what I plan on updating or upgrading in the future so there's a lot of other video series out there, uh, very good stuff, very good advice. Uh, the hard part for me starting out was a lot of those guys making the videos are professionals. They're in the industry and that gear is either donated to them or they're paid to use it or something like that. And I'm not saying that you don't get a fair opinion that way because in general I think you do. A lot of good honest people out there. Uh, the issue is starting out, I can't afford the stuff that a lot of guys are recommending. And you don't need to. I mean, you don't need a, a three to four hundred dollar sleeping bag. You don't need a five hundred to a thousand dollar tent to get out west and be successful, safe, and comfortable. So, <clears throat> starting out, you're going to need a tent, all right? So, if you're hunting out west, my hunting's geared in the mountains, not the prairies or the plains. Uh, if you're going to hunt prairies or plains, this advice may not be uh, spot on for you, but. As you begin getting out there, you're going to need a tent, all right? The tent is going to depend on a couple of things. It's going to depend on how much space you need and the season or seasons you intend to hunt in, all right? So there's a lot of different options out there for tents. Uh, I have two that I currently use out west. We'll talk about both of them in a little bit. But you need to understand with tents, they're rated to season and wind load, all right? In my opinion wind load is not terribly important because you can generally find a decent spot to camp and if it's supposed to be really bad weather i'm i'm breaking spike camp and heading back down to the vehicle all right i, I would not stay up in the mountains and tornadoes or raging blizzards or anything like that and unless you're extremely experienced and very well equipped you probably shouldn't either so we're going to talk just basically um a good tent to start out with, if you can find one and afford one, is a good three and a half season tent. Uh, there's more tent companies out there than I can even begin to name. Um, some of the good budget tents I've seen out there are made by Eureka and Alps, all right? So those are two brands uh, that I use and have used, uh, that guys I hunt with use and have used. And again, you can get into a, a decent three season tent for that 100 to 150 mark. If you're spending less than that, you're probably not going to be happy with the tent. I know guys that have tried, zippers go out, screens rip. So my advice, get at least into that $120 to $200 range to get a tent. Make sure they're well reviewed with good reviews. And then go from there. If you want a three plus or a four season tent, you're going to be either carrying an enormous amount of weight or spending more money. So a good three plus season tent is gonna be that 150 to 250 minimum in my experience. So again, tents are very important. You, you have to understand the design of the tent. You can't take a $60 Walmart tent up there and expect it to survive a snowstorm. That's just not the way it works. Generally, the more money you spend, the more of a snow load and a wind load you get uh, as far as ratings for your tent. But Tent size, again, it depends on how you hunt. So I have two of them right now that I use. One's a four man, one's a one man, all right? The one man's a one man, the four man's an actual two man, all right? As you know, tent ratings are for tiny little midgets. No offense if you are one, sorry, but they're ridiculous. So this tent in particular, this is not the carrying case it came with. 
This is a Eureka Timberline four person tent. We have had this tent as near as I could figure since I was a teenager, so about 24 years now. And it's still waterproof, it's still durable, the zippers still work. So this tent has been absolutely phenomenal. We have hundreds and hundreds of hours, and when I see we, I mean my brother and I, uh, in this tent, we used it in Boy Scouts, we used it backpacking into the Boundary Waters, we've used it hunting, now our kids are using it in Boy Scouts, backpacking into the Boundary Waters. So, been a very, very good tent. Again, this is a Eureka Timberline four person. This is an A-frame tent. I consider this a true three and a half season tent. Uh, what's meant by that is, it's not gonna load up on snow because of the A-frame design, so it can handle snow up high or down low or anywhere, honestly. Uh, it sheds the snow very well, uh, it bucks the wind fairly well as long as you stake it in good and pick a decent spot. And then the main thing for a four-piece tent is you have the ability to zip and cover pretty much all of the mesh in this tent, right? A lot of the newer tents are 70-80% mesh, which is extremely nice in the summer. It's very comfortable to get a breeze through. Not so good when it's 15 degrees out, right? So if you're going to pick a tent to hunt all seasons, you need to pick one where you can cover at least the vast majority of the mesh with something that's going to block the wind. This tent does that. This tent you can find at Walmart or pretty much anywhere around that $150 mark on sale. Um, is this the perfect tent for the mountains? No, this tent is fair size carry and it weighs in at about eight and a half pounds. All right. This is a tent I don't take if I'm hiking by myself or if I'm sleeping by myself. So. This tent gets split between two people. One takes the body, one takes the fly, the poles, and the stakes. And that way we're each carrying about four pounds, which is very manageable. Um, moving up from here to get a, a tent this size that's substantially lighter, and which you can. I mean, there's tents out there that'll do everything this tent will do in about that five and a half pound range. But you're gonna spend a significant amount of money to get there. And we'll talk a little bit about higher end tents here farther on. But again, starting out, this is a good starting tent for two people to carry. I would find something, you know, if you can afford more, go go better. But if not, something like this will work great. Again, just make sure if you're planning on hunting in snow, you can zip up the vast majority of the mesh to try and cut that wind down, and it's going to buck the snow. It's going to be rated for a snow load. Uh, otherwise, that's about all I have to say about this one. So... One man tent, if you watched my Kuyu pack video, you've seen this. This is a Light Fighter tent. Light Fighter is the company name. Uh, I had this tent issued to me about five years ago in the military. In that video, I said about 10, but I actually did the math. I want to say it was about five years ago. Uh, not this specific tent, unfortunately. I had to turn mine in when I left the military, but Light fire tent weighs in about four and a half pounds. It's a true one man tent. So it's about 24 inches wide. There's enough room to get you and your rifle inside the tent with sleeping pads, sleeping bag and gear. And that's about it. The thing I really like about this tent or the things I like, this tent is very well made. Uh, you can pick these up on eBay generally right now for about $200. So at four and a half pounds, you could certainly find a lighter tent of similar size, but again, uh, I have hundreds of hours of experience in these tents. They're very durable. They're extremely easy to set up. I really like the design. And one of the reasons I haven't yet been able to get rid of it is it has two big vestibules. Uh, it could be a pain in the butt because it takes up more square foot on the ground. You gotta find a little larger spot for it. But with the two big vestibules, some of the other guys I hunt with are running true lightweight tents. Uh, they don't have a vestibule. So with the two on here, I can get four packs under it. This is tall enough. I can still sit up in it, stick my legs out the door under the vestibule, and cook under there. So that I like a lot. Um, this tent is about 70% mesh. It does have a bathtub floor. Both these do, which is extremely important to keep you dry. Uh, this is not a good late season tent because of the mesh. However, Light Fighter did come out with a winter kit for this now. So for an extra pound at about five pounds, uh, seven or eight ounces, you can put that on and it covers up about 90% of the mesh. Uh, again, that would work very well. I don't have it yet. I'm trying to decide if I want to buy it. What I do right now, if I'm taking this up 
third or fourth season when I know there's going to be snow is I bring a bivy sack. So I'll put the bivy sack inside the tent on my sleeping pad with my bag in it. That adds some warmth to my bag and it also blocks the wind that sneaks through the tent. Having said that, if I stake this festival build down as close to the ground as I can get it, this will do the four seasons fairly well. Uh, I've used both these on snow. If you're going to be backpacking in the mountains, bring a ground cloth. People don't and it blows my mind. I mean, they're like, you can get them down to like one or two ounces if you use Tyvek or really thin poly type materials. So it's going to protect the floor of the tent from cuts and it's going to protect the floor of the tent from getting as wet. Uh, this one I had up last year, the Eureka. We spike camped in that. We found some bulls quite a ways from camp, so we set up a camp. Uh, we had about a foot and a half of snow. I ended up taking the snow from uphill, pushing it downhill, getting the spot as level as I could. You'd be amazed with all the ground you cover in the mountains, how few flat spots there are to set up a tent. Uh, I had a ground cloth under that and worked very well. I, I never doubted that it would. We could zip up 90% of the mesh. We could zip up 100 if we wanted, but you always want some ventilation for moisture management. But we slept on that out there. We stayed dry. We stayed warm. It blocked the wind. It did everything I needed it to do. So again, an important part of that is a ground cloth. Don't skimp on a couple ounces. Bring a decent ground cloth. So very good tent. Again, I hope that kind of gives you a rundown on some tents. Uh, again, in my opinion, good budget tents, Eureka and Alps are two you can look at. They make pretty decent stuff. Uh, if you want to get into the higher end mountaineering tents, you're looking at like Big Agnes makes very good tents. Um, Nemo makes great tents. And then all of your big technical hunting clothing brands are making tents now. Stone Glacier has really good tents. Kuyu has good tents. First Light has good tents. Um, but you're going to be looking in that $400 to $800 range for those. Yeah. Are they worth it? Yeah, probably. And, but at this time, I just am not budgeting to spend that much money on a tent. Eventually, though, I'll probably replace the Eureka for sure, just due to weight. And probably, have it, again, somewhere years down the road, the light fire. Moving on from tents. So another critical part of a sleep system in the mountains is a sleeping pad. You have to bring a sleeping pad. Don't think you can get by without it. This is, is as important to your warmth and safety as a sleeping bag, all right? Um, brand does not matter. The, the thing you need to know about sleeping pads is the insulation, all right? So you want a pad that's appropriately sized to you. Uh, this one is a Climate Insulated Static V Recon. I believe it's the same as the normal Insulated Static V, just in a military color, which is why they added the Recon. Um, this one is 23 by 72 inches and 2.5 and inches thick. All right, That works very well for me. This is an insulated pad with an R value of 4.4. If you're looking to get into the late seasons, I would recommend an absolute minimum of a four for an R value. And if you're a cold sleeper, you're gonna to wanna to go up from there. So the, the sleeping pad is crucial. It's gonna insulate you from the ground, all right? As everybody knows, the ground is cold later in the year. There's usually snow on it at some point throughout hunting season. You have to have something to buffer you from that cold ground. Again, if you don't bring a sleeping pad, you're gonna be absolutely miserable because you're gonna compress down the sleeping bag between you and the ground and you're gonna get very little insulation. Uh, in my opinion, the climate right now is the best value out there. So you can get this one, it's heavy at two pounds. There's certainly lighter weight ones, but you can get these on sale on Camel Fire, which is an excellent website to pick up overstock and uh, discontinued items for about that fifty to eighty dollars. Um, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. I was mowing. So there's obviously better pads out there. Um, I mean, you can spend a phenomenal amount of money on pads, but as far as comfort, as far as our value, this thing does everything I need. Uh, I don't sleep well. I thrash around throughout the night. I spend a lot of time on my side. This one keeps me off the ground. I will tell you, like last year when we were sleeping up on the mountain in the snow, if I slid off my pad, which I did more than once, I knew it because whatever part of me was not on the pad and was touching the tent floor was cold, which would wake me up. I would scoot back on the pad, go back to sleep. So again, you have to have a sleeping pad. I would bring an insulated sleeping pad to the mountains no matter what season you're hunting, even archery, all right? An R4 is not gonna kill you with heat. 
Uh, it's going to be comfortable. It's going to insulate you from the ground. And I would go from there. Time on this, I've had this one two and a half years. Uh, I've used it several times. It's worked very well. I've had no problems with it leaking air or anything like that. It keeps me warm. It keeps me off the ground. I have the uninsulated one I used about the last three and a half years in the military, and I have hundreds of hours on that with no issues. All right, I have seen some reviews that say that these are not always durable for big guys. As a reference, I'm 5'11", 215 pounds, and I've yet to have an issue with either one of my pads. But again, you need to test these before you hit the mountains. So moving on to the next part of the sleep system is, of course, the sleeping bags. So we've got our tent that's meant for the conditions we're hunting in. We've got an insulated sleeping pad. Again, especially later in the season, at least an R4. You can get by with a little less than that earlier, but the thing doesn't produce heat. It simply reflex it back and insulates you from the ground. So you're not gonna be too hot in that in September. Sleeping bags, personal choice, all right? A lot of different opinions. Uh, this one is a slumber bed jack, 20 degree downwind bag. This one has the dry down. So you can get a down bag or a synthetic bag and you can also get quilts now. I do have a quilt I use during warmer weather. Um, difference between the two and I, you probably know this there's 5,000 videos on it out there but down bags are going to loft better they're going to compress down better uh, this one could compress down significantly farther yet if I really wanted it to uh, I find down extremely comfortable it's very warm for its weight so benefits of down very compressible very lightweight the issue with down is if it gets really saturated with water it loses its ability to heat so in my opinion, I'm not that concerned about that. I hike with the pack cover and dry bags. Everything goes into a good tent when I get where I'm going. I've never had an issue with a down sleeping bag getting wet and not insulating well. But just be aware that that can be a problem. So if you're going to a place like Washington to hunt out there where it rains all the time, down may not be your best choice, all right? You may want to look at a synthetic. We get a real good mix. About half the guys I hunt with run down. The other half are running synthetic. Uh, the synthetic bags for the same temp rating are enormous. They're going to be at least twice this size, if not three times this size. So I like my down bags. 20 degrees the first two seasons, usually uh, early to mid-October. If I'm going later than that, I'll bring the same brand in a zero degree bag. Um, Understand with sleeping bag temperature ratings, they are tested to the very max. So 20 degrees is not the comfort rating of this bag. 20 degrees, if you're curled up in a ball, not moving, tested with a base layer is what you should be able to get through and sleep and not be miserable. All right, so that is not the comfort rating. That's important to understand. When they test bags, they generally test the comfort rating and the absolute minimum temperature that you can survive in it. Uh, without fearing hypothermia or death. So keep that in mind. A zero degree bag is going to be good to about 20 degrees. Now you can obviously add clothing and that's going to increase the R value or a liner. So I'll bring a 20 early on. I'll bring a zero later. If I get out there in a zero degree bag and it's going to be below about 15 degrees, I generally sleep in my puffy coat and pants. That's going to add a good amount of warmth. That's going to keep me more than comfortable. But understand again, these are rated for max conditions with somebody in a decent set or in a decent base layer. So if you're a guy that has to sleep in your boxers, you are not gonna be comfortable at 20 degrees in this bag. You might not be comfortable at 30 degrees. And that's not just this brand, that's every brand. I always tell people add at least 15 degrees to what you see on the bag. So a 20 degree bag in your boxers might keep you comfortable at about 35. So it's hard to have too much sleeping bag aside from the weight and the bulk, all right? But you're, again, you're going to want a good bag. All of this works together. You're going to compress the bottom part of this where you're sleeping on it. That's where the pad comes in to keep that loft and insulation going. And it needs to be in a good tent so you can stay dry. All right, finishing up here. Pillow. Uh, you may not be a sissy like me. I need a decent pillow to sleep well. If I don't, I get neck aches, I get back aches. And if I don't sleep well, nobody wants to be around me because I'm not a very nice guy. So I highly recommend this. This is the Nemo Philo. They have several different sizes of this now. 
Uh, this rolls up and packs down very small into its own little compartment, which is built in. Uh, this thing is amazing. It's got about three quarter inch of foam. You fill it here with air and it blows up nice. And then on the back here, you can undo this little Velcro thing. And you can stuff clothing in here. So you can get really good loft out of this. It's extremely comfortable. It's not terribly heavy weight. And again, it's certainly bulkier than an all air pillow, but this is worth every single ounce to me. This uh, I paid about 35 or $40 for. So before I forget real quick, let's talk price. Pillow, 15 to $40, depending on the comfort level. Again, this is a Slumberjack. These are very good values for the money in my opinion. These, the 20 degree is gonna run you about 140, the zero degree, I think about 180, you can probably find them on sale. If you want a synthetic bag, you can get by at about half that, 60 to 70 bucks. Uh, but you're adding again, two to three times the bulk and probably at least twice the weight. I already touched on the climate. Um, these are about 50 to 80 bucks on sale. And certainly wait for a sale if you can. Again, you can go up to uh, a lighter sleeping pad with a higher R value, but you're gonna spend two to three times as much. Are they worth it? Probably, but there's just not money in my budget for that right now. Tents, again, that one, uh, the Light Fighter 200 on eBay, uh, mill surplus, generally they'll come in either really gently used or new. The Eureka is about 150 on sale. And again, you can certainly go up from there. So a couple other things I take with for camp gear when I'm in the mountains, I take a sit pad. Um, again, this one I got at a local fleet store. It was like 12 bucks. Thermos seat, very lightweight. I don't know what it weighs. Maybe a few ounces, but super nice to have something insulating and dry to sit on when you're sitting around camp making meals. And these come with me wherever I go because one of these gets strapped to the back of my pack for orange right I like to carry some orange on the back of my pack I think that's important it's kind of funny because I have a camel pack but anyway uh, again you don't have to spend a lot of money this one was less than 15 I believe uh, a little bulkier a little heavier than this this is a Kuyu I got this when I ordered my pack uh, does not have near the the thickness or the bulkiness still insulates fairly well I've been really happy with this it's a little smaller but again a sit pad in my opinion essential i would not go up there without it especially if it's cold or there's snow on the ground get something to insulate your butt from the ground and keep it dry i like orange so nobody shoots at my backside last thing for camp equipment for your beginning western hunters you're going to need a stove this is a camp chef striker this has been a very good stove you can pack everything up inside of it here you got your fuel You've got your stove itself, everything nests together in there. Uh, this stove has worked very well. I've had zero issues. It does well at elevation. I've had this above 10,000 feet. It's still efficient. Um, you can get by with just a normal burner and a titanium pot. A lot of guys prefer that. Apparently, there's a whole bunch of haters of this type of stove out there. But for convenience and fuel efficiency, in my opinion, you can't beat one of these stoves with a flex ring. Um, Camp Chef probably copied this directly from Jetboil, let's be honest. But these, very affordable, you can find these 40 to 60 bucks. A big fuel cylinder is going to last me the whole five or six days I'm out in the mountains. That's going to be more than enough. Um, I like this. So I have upgraded this, not because it didn't work or do what I wanted, simply because it's extremely bulky and it's fairly heavy. So if I'm bringing one stove for two to three guys uh, or more, I'm bringing this or if I have to melt snow for water which we did last year right this has a very high volume I think it's a liter maybe a smidge over I can't remember but this one will heat a lot of water fast um, for this year trying to whittle down my size and weight uh, I like small packs I don't like bringing a bigger pack than I have to so this year I updated or upgraded to a jet boil stash so that's just a little slinky cup uh, this bag did not come with it. I had this from a different stove system. So, uh, Jeff Oil Stash, this thing is phenomenal, all right? It's not going to have the capacity of the camp shaft. You're going to have about 30 35% less volume, but this is extremely lightweight. It's very efficient. Again, everything packs inside of it. It's got a spot for your lighter, your small fuel canister. 
your stove itself, um, this one does not take a specific pot. This simply sits on there. There's plenty of reviews on these if you want to watch them. <clears throat> but you can use this for anything, frying pans, kettles. So a little more leeway in that than the Camp Chef, which basically has to nest on this specific container. You can get an adapter for the Camp Chef, just like you can for the Jet Boil, so you can set other stuff on it. But it doesn't come in here, and so far they've been out of stock. Uh, other thing in here is the stand. So you got the stand, the small cylinder, the lighter, the stove itself. The cup sits right on top real nice. Um, this one will do, I'm trying to think here, I believe about 750 milliliters. So this is enough uh, for two good cups of coffee or a mountain house and about two thirds of a cup of coffee. But again, it's about half the size of that one and about half the weight. I really like this stove. If I'm going up just one to two guys, I'm gonna take this fuel cylinder out. I'm gonna put the big one in here, which actually fits, which is awesome. You can get the lid back on here, close this up. I just hang this from the handle and this goes in my pack like that with the big cylinder. Again, that's gonna get me several days in the mountains and it works very well, so. All right, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. This is going to be the first in a series. Again, you don't have to spend enormous amounts of money on the absolute best equipment. Got an army patch there. No one demand to get out there and hunt. Um, the more I do it, the more I see the value in some of the higher price stuff like this. This is about twice as much as the Camp Chef. Efficiency as far as fuel, very similar, but half the weight, half the bulk. And you're only losing about 30-35% of the capacity. So, uh, all right, at the end of each video, I'm going to do a quick bit of advice. So here is one for you. If you are hunting out west and it is supposed to blizzard or snow, leave the mountains to a safe place, all right? I, I was out there last year. The rangers were beside themselves. They had spent like two and a half days trying to help people get off the tops of mountains. Uh, with the technology nowadays, blizzards should not be a mystery, right? We should all be checking the weather as frequently as possible so we know what's coming. If you're not set up to hunt in a significant amount of snowfall, which includes your vehicle, if you do not have a vehicle with four-wheel drive, higher lift, and a full set of chains, and they're talking more than a few inches of snow, you need to pack your stuff and get off the mountain, all right? People are risking their lives to get up there and try and help people get off the mountain in those circumstances and that makes no sense to me. We need to be responsible. I don't know if anybody here's ever tried hunting in a blizzard, but I have and I've never been successful. So friendly advice for the day. If you cannot make 100% certain sure that you can get off the mountain where you're at if it calls for a substantial amount of snow, Get off before the snow gets there. Move down. Chances are the elk are not going to be far behind you and be safe. So, again, I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments. Again, I'm sponsored by nobody. I get paid nothing for this. And if you're feeling generous, hit the like and subscribe button. Have a good day and get in shape. Elk season's only a few months away.